Welcome to Falcon Report. Today we are going to be interviewing Dr. Slimming. How long have you been here at Feaster? Hi everyone, I've been at Feaster now for eight years. Wow, that's a pretty long time. It sure has, it's flown by, but happy to have been here that long. What's your favorite part of your job? My favorite part is actually this, is getting to talk to students, getting to know them, getting to build relationships with them, seeing what they do, not only in school, but also what they like to do outside of school. Oh. <laughs> um, what's your favorite spot on all campus? I would have to say the falcon's nest, because the falcon's nest has comfortable breeze going by, shade now that it's been so hot, get to see students come by, get to sit down on the picnic tables. That's nice. What's your favorite sport, and if you have one, what team? It's a good question. So one thing you should know about me is I love all sports. Um, come talk to me about football, soccer, b b baseball, basketball, anything at all. But I would say my favorite sport is soccer. And I follow the um, a lot of the Mexican national league teams um, and also just the Mexican national team. Oh, I love soccer. Like my brother used to always play. But um, uh, what's your favorite hobby? Favorite hobby, I would say lately it's been running or reading. That's nice. Oh, and also my next question was, do you like to do you like reading? If so, what book? I do like reading. Uh, right now, I'm not reading anything like a novel or anything. I'm reading more of like an education book. But um, typically, I do like to read some historical fiction books. I really enjoy those. Oh yeah, I I um I agree with you because I really love those kind of books. That's all for today. See you guys next time on on Feaster on here on Feaster Falcon Report. Bye. We are the Falcon Report team, and today we will be interviewing Dr. Dominguez. I am Saul, and this is my partner, Ayana. Hi, my name is Ayana, and before we move on to the questions, Dr. Dominguez, would you like to say some words? Yes, I would. Hi, Falcons. My name is Dr. Dominguez, and I'm the VAPA principal here at Feaster Charter School. I am so excited to be interviewed this afternoon by Ayana and Saul, and I hope that after our interview, you'll be able to take away some useful information about a very, the very important topic of COVID-19. What do you plan on doing when COVID is over? That's a really great question, Ayana. I think uh, everyone is really eager to have COVID be over. Uh, and so definitely something that makes Feaster special are all of the performances that we have through our VAPA Academy. And so I would say that the first thing that I think we're all excited about and that we're missing are our theater performances. Yes. So certainly bringing back our theater performances, our awards assemblies, our musical concerts, all of the events and, and um, really the events that bring the community together. And so that certainly is something that we are really looking forward to once COVID is over. What a great question. Do you have any predictions on when we can take off the mask? Interesting question. So I would say that uh, we probably will be able to take off our mask once the uh, state of California as well as San Diego County have shared that it's it's safe to do so. Uh, and so until then, we're still going to continue to wear our mask over our nose and our mouth, just so that we make sure that we're not spreading any germs to our classmates uh, or even our staff members here. Do you know if the, schools will close, the school will close down during, due to COVID? Oh, that's a really, you, <laughs> these are really great questions. <laughs> Uh, so at this point, there are no plans to close the school down. We are fully open. We're excited that all of our students are back. Uh, and, and so there, at this point, is no plan to close the school down. We're, uh, you know, we, we've definitely put a lot of um, 
time, effort, and planning to make sure that all of the health guidelines and all of the, the regulations are being followed uh, and that we're keeping up to date when things change. So uh, we feel confident with our plan. Everyone on staff knows what the plan is. Uh, and anytime there is uh, any situation that comes up, we are in, you know, we, we know exactly what we need to do to make sure that students and staff members are safe. What another great answer. I especially like what you said that um, you guys will open up the theater program because I really love theater a lot. I know, I know. <laughs> I can't wait until we get to the point where we can have uh, one of our old type of plays back where everyone comes together uh, with a full audience and, and a full uh, cast. Um, hi, um, this is Saul again. And we'll, my first question is, will there be assembly awards and will parents be able to come in? Very good question. So for the upcoming quarter, we are going to continue to host assembly awards virtually. Uh, I am hopeful that sometime in the near future, we will be able to host uh, awards, award assemblies in person and, and at that point invite parents and, and family members to come and, and celebrate our students. Mm -hmm. So COVID has, has had an effect on a lot of individuals, right? And, mm -hmm. and definitely um, with COVID, there has certainly been a transition with last year being three quarters of the time online and then one quarter of the time in person. Um, but with that effect, I also believe that there has been some positive aspects of that. Uh, and one of those being that, you know, now students and parents are really well versed in technology. Uh, and it's really quite amazing how, uh, how everyone really pulled together last, last school year to make sure that students were learning. Uh, parents were helping making uh, to make sure that there was a nice learning environment at home. Teachers had to learn how to teach online. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, students really had the just the, the perseverance to be able to get through challenging situations, which is not being able to see your friends, uh, not being able to see your teachers, uh, and then ultimately learning from home. So I think all in all, Definitely COVID has had uh, an effect on students' education, but through that, there have also been some positive aspects that I think have um, helped students just persevere through tough situations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you were explaining everything that I was thinking, like, yeah, and with this COVID and needing to learn online, I guess uh, I got to learn more about how to use Teams. Yes. And well, I learned without Zoom. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> teams and Zooms, and now we're experts, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, my third and maybe last question, well, yeah, last question is, will kids have to get vaccinated to come to school? That's a very great question. Uh, at this point, we don't have any information that, uh, uh, regarding that point, right? Mm -hmm. it, and, and so that's something that um, you know, the education department, the health department uh, will need to work closely together with medical providers in order to make that type of decision. Uh, and so typically the process is once decisions have been made uh, through the government and, and with the support of the medical providers, then schools get that information and we kind of work through what the next steps would look like. Mm -hmm. So. I don't have an answer uh, that that specifically um, addresses that question. Right now, we don't have any guidance um, that students need to get it. But as you know, since 2019, <laughs> things have been changing frequently. Uh, and so if, if things change, then we'll be sure to make sure that the community knows of those changes. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. This will be all the questions we have. Thank you very much. I just want to share that Ayana and Saul, you have done an excellent job uh, with the interview questions as well as with the reporting. So I appreciate our time together uh, and I look forward to our next interview. Thank you. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Dominguez, on this week's episode of our Falcon Report. 
And thank you, um, everyone, for watching our videos. And Dr. Mangus, would you like to say anything before we go? I would. Uh, I just want to give a huge shout out to Saul and Ayana. Excellent reporting, and I look forward to our next interview. Thank you, and have a great day. I just wanted to discuss about uni the uniform policy here at our school and the reason we have uniforms is to provide a safe and orderly environment for students here and we're required to dress in uniform at all times and then even when we're going on a field trip. Our only school appropriate free dress days are on Halloween and Picture Day, which are the days where you are allowed to wear, not wear a uniform and you can wear whatever you want. For Halloween, it would be a costume or if you want to wear your regular clothes. And for Picture Day, it's a, the clothes you want to wear for your picture. Okay, the TK through sixth grade or our elementary school uniforms are solid navy blue, white or red top, including polo shirt, t-shirt, blouse, and sweatshirts. School t-shirts are also allowed as part of our uniforms. Okay, navy blue trousers, skirts, skorts, pants, or sweatpants. We also have leggings or tights under a skirt are also acceptable in red, white, blue, or black only. No jeans or leggings. And for our middle school, seventh and eighth grade uniform policy is solid burgundy black or gray polo shirt, t-shirt or blouse. School t-shirts are allowed as a part of the uniform. Solid burgundy black or gray jacket, sweatshirt and hoodies are also allowed. And khaki or black trousers, shorts, skorts and skirts. No jeans or leggings. PE uniform guidelines, which are the guidelines that you for your PE dressing, would be a solid gray t-shirt or Feaster PE t-shirt for sale in the USB office, a solid burgundy sweatshirt hoodie for sale in the USB store, and then a solid black shorts or athletic pants. Feaster shorts and pants for sale in the US ASB office. And last but not least would be athletic tennis shoes. And here on my screen, as you can see, these are some of the examples of some of the uniforms that are required in elementary and middle school. Thank you. Vengo a hablar sobre el uniforme escolar. Eh, camiseta, eh, camiseta que se puede usar es una eh, azul, azul marino sólida, roja o blanca. Eh, que incluye polo. Camiseta, blusa y sudadera se permiten camisetas escolares como parte del uniforme. Y bueno, el uniforme simplemente nos ayuda a distinguir a un niño que si va a la escuela o es un niño que puede venir de visita. Básicamente pues, es eso, ¿no? Y los grados de séptimo a octavo grado eh, usan un uniforme distinto, por eso también ahí ayuda un poco a saber de qué grado puede ser un niño o niña. Eh, así que esto sería, no más les vengo aquí a recordar que siempre usen su uniforme y para así los pueden distinguir y también pueden distinguir de qué grado son. Hi, my name is Iana. This event is hosted by FISA Charter School Counseling Department. Link is right here. August 30th, TK to 4th grade. August 31st, Kinder to 5th grade through 8th grade. Join a club from home. Three clubs to choose from to 12.30 to 1 p.m. Thank you and have a good day.